Hey guys, Delia here. So today I'm going to talk about lilies. And we grow a lot of lilies in our gardens or as house plants that are not true lilies, like the day lily or Peruvian lily or lily of the valley or a peace lily. But these lilies right here are the true lilies or a lilium. And within the lilium, species they have a lot of different types of lilies they are asiatic oriental american hybrids um, there is candidum there are uh, some wild species that are native to north america so the diversity of the true lilium is just immense in fact if you want to learn a little bit more you can just go to north american lily society and they pretty much list all of the groups of um, the true lily family now today i'm just going to show you the lilies that i have in my garden and talk about how um, i care about them or how i take care of them <laughs> i do care about them but i also take care of them um, so these lilies right here are the oriental lilies and I uh, bought all of my lilies in Costco. Um, I buy them early in the spring. I plant them early in the spring and I do get blooms the following year. Um, I do rarely get blooms the same year I plant them because they do need to establish a little bit. Now, when I buy these lilies, the height of the lilies usually is on the package and I am I have to tell you that I am really surprised <laughs> because like this one right here, I measured it um, yesterday and it was six feet, nine inches. And I don't think that I bought any of the tree lilies, which you can buy lilies that are really, really tall, could be up to eight feet tall, and they're called tree lilies. But I think these lilies are just really happy in this spot. That's why they're so tall. Now, if you do buy tree lilies, the ones that are supposed to grow really tall, you may not get um, them as tall the same year or the following year. Maybe year two or three, they will get really tall. So definitely have patience with that because it's so worth it to see something like this bloom. Now, lilies are a little bit, I wouldn't say hated plant, but a lot of people have a different associations with them. Um, for example, they used a lot in funeral arrangements. So that scent that they have kind of a lot of times brings back bad memories. I don't have those associations because where I come from, we actually don't use um, the true lily. We use canna lilies um, in funeral arrangements. So I again, don't have bad associations with them. All I have for these plants is love. I absolutely adore them for a few reasons. Um, one, I can grow them in shade. In my um, zone, zone six, northern New Jersey, under these giant trees, which is a <laughs> great feat. There are uh, very few true large blooming flowers that you can grow in shade of trees, um, like the hydrangeas I have in the back are one of them and these lilies. Um, another reason why I love them is because they provide this height right in the middle of the summer where there's a lot of things kind of in between, a lot of things stopped blooming or not blooming yet and this color and fragrance and height add a lot of interest into this area. Before I move on to uh, talking about the care of the lilies I just wanted to show you these stunning Casablanca lilies that I have growing under the cherry tree and it is a, just a stunning display and the fact that I can grow such beautiful flowers in the shade is just amazing I mean, look at that they are right next to the elephant ears that are starting to fill in nicely uh, these are also bought in costco and i love the pure white flowers All right, so as for the lily care, they really are not that fussy. They are hardy from zones three through 10, and some um, varieties 
are even hardy to zone two, which is amazing. Um, as for the soil, they prefer a slightly acidic soil in the garden, but there's one thing that they will not tolerate in the garden, which is poor drainage. They really need that water uh, away from the bulb. Um, as I mentioned, I plant my uh, lily bulbs early in the spring and the flowers usually appear the next season. And when um, they need to be divided in uh, three to four years, I divide them in the fall after the foliage starts to die back. And I probably will make a video um, about how to divide lilies. The important thing to remember when you're dividing lilies is that you have to uh, plant those divisions right away in the garden because they cannot tolerate waiting even um, like a day to be planted because some other bulbs you can pretty much store for a while and then plant them later but that's not the case with um, lilies now i do fertilize all of my gardens early in the spring with a, a nice compost layer and uh, for the lilies i do fertilize them with a 10 10 10 fertilizer early in the spring as well and right as they're about to bloom i fertilize them again to get bigger and more flowers but other than that um, you know they can grow in the shade and in the sun they're very versatile plants so as you can see i have these in the shade here i would love another patch out in the sun to create that connection in the garden but um, there is one huge problem that I have with lilies and it is red lily beetle. And I will talk in a second about how I deal with that pesky pest. All right, let me introduce you to the red lily beetle. They're actually quite pretty um, and they have this red back with a black belly and black legs. If they see any source of danger, a person coming or a shadow, they actually drop to the ground and um, make this high pitched noise to alert other beetles. And you can see the damage as well. Uh, so let me talk about how I deal with these critters. The way I deal with the red lily beetles is pretty much the same way I deal with the Japanese beetles in my garden. Now, the method number one is to pick them. And this is the most organic, the safest for the environment method. It is a little bit uh, labor intensive, but that's okay. Um, I spend about 10 minutes every morning putting them in a bucket of soapy water and then putting them out in the sun so they suffocate and die and then put them in the garbage. It sounds labor intensive, but every single beetle that you collect actually prevents the next like exponential uh, explosion of the population of beetles because every female can lay many, many eggs. So you're doing <laughs> a lot of work just by collecting them. Um, now, the second method is to spray, and I only use organics in my garden because we do have pets. Um, there are a lot of bees in the garden and a lot of beneficial insects. And the uh, sprays that I use is uh, Bonide Dead Bug, and I will post all of these in the description down below. Um, I like Dr. Earth and Organicide. This one is um, one of my go-to and there's also neem oil. I don't have the bottle because I ran out. And um, the secret with the organic sprays is that you have to be consistent with them because they are not that persistent on the foliage and they pretty much um, disappear in a couple of days and you have to spray every couple of days and alternate the treatments because a lot of insects, not just beetles, they get used to the same chemicals and it does not affect them anymore. That's why I have all these different <laughs> sprays right here. And I switch them every couple of weeks and it seems to be working. I um, will show you in a second what difference it makes of spraying versus not spraying, even with the organic methods. So here are the lilies I sprayed only once this spring um, and then I sort of decided to experiment and leave them alone and just see the difference between spraying and not spraying. 
even if you use organic methods, uh, make sure that you follow instructions on the label. And I normally spray my plants either early in the morning or late at night when the pollinators are not out. Also, word of caution, lilies are toxic to cats. And if you have any curious cats in your life, definitely keep them away from the lilies. Our cats could care less about any plants in our garden, but we still keep them indoors for the lily season. And I think a lot of people are actually surprised as to just how many poisonous plants gardeners have in their gardens because plants try to keep themselves from being eaten by mammals or insects. And I would say most of the plants that we grow are actually poisonous, including other types of lilies like day lilies or lily of the valley. So do your research before you plant anything in your garden. If you have any curious pets that like to get into the plants, supervise them at all times and do your research. But I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learned something new about the lilies or about how to save them from the dreaded red lily beetle and how to control them and how to grow them. Um, anyway, thank you so much guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye.